It's been more than a decade since his first novel, The Kite Runner, made him famous. Now, the best-selling Afghan author, Khalid Hosseini, has published a new book about his homeland. And The Mountains Echoed sets out to give a more personal insight into what's happened in Afghanistan over the last 30 years. Casey Razzle met up with Hosseini in New York, where he now lives for his only British television interview. Khalid Hosseini is haunted by Afghanistan, the country he left when he was 11. His latest novel explores the terrible choice a father makes, which ruptures the bond between a brother and sister. Abdullah grinned to himself. All right, fine. You'll be close by. Yes, he said. Until we're old. Very old. For always? Yes, for always. Khalid Hosseini read me an extract from his new book on a Manhattan rooftop. The Kite Runner author gave us his only interview for British television, his first stop on a 41-city promotional tour. The whole novel began with a tiny but perfectly delivered, perfectly clear image, which just sort of came out of the blue. And it was of a man walking across the desert and he was pulling this little radio flyer red wagon behind him and there was a little girl inside of it and about 10 paces behind there was a boy following them and it just came out of the blue and, and I, it really startled me and I felt so compelled to find out who these people were. That fictional father decides to sell one child to safeguard the others. It isn't the stuff of imagination. Channel 4 News has filmed a family making the same awful choice. When I go to Afghanistan, I meet people who um, have to make very painful choices about their families. So uh, I found that to be sad, but also incredibly dramatic and full of the kinds of stuff that uh, uh, appealed to me from a, from a dramatic standpoint. Hosseini's privileged childhood in Kabul was cut short after the Russians invaded in the 70s. His family fled to America. But decades on, and with 38 million books sold and counting, he is, for many readers, their main introduction to the country and its past. When I wrote my first novel, I realized just how vivid the memories were for me of that time and place of growing up in the, let's say, the 70s and 60s and 70s in Afghanistan. Is the Afghanistan you write about a fantasy, a construct, or a reality? No, it was actually was like that. I mean, of course, there's a bit of a romanticized version of it in my books because a sort of there's a, it's, it's compromised somewhat by the glow and nostalgia and so on. But compared to what's happened in the following 30 years, I think most Afghans today would think of that era as the golden era and would love to trade places. And I, I'm just glad that I got to live through those final years of peace and calm in Afghanistan before everything unraveled. His best-selling first novel, The Kite Runner, was also a hit film. A story of betrayal and redemption, it showcased the Afghan obsession with competitive kite flying, a pastime banned under the Taliban. What kind of Afghanistan do you think they'll be once the troops leave? The great concern of Afghanistan is not so much going back to the days of the burkas and the no kite flying. The real great concerns of Afghans is the years previous to the Taliban, that is the ethnic war. That is the doomsday scenario for Afghans and one that frankly you could legitimately argue could happen. And I think what gives me hope ultimately at the end of the day about Afghanistan is I'm concerned about sh the short term, but in the long term I'm very hopeful. Is Afghanistan's median age of people is 17. Now, 60 percent of people are under the age of 20. So this is a young country full of young people who are not driven by the ideological sort of divisiveness of the past. You know, they want to build a civil society. The more cynical say fear of the future means many of those bright young hopes are already leaving. Hosseini, the emigre, though, returns to Afghanistan to try to give something back all too aware of his debt to the place that has so inspired him. There's a sense of guilt that you feel because your life has turned out so much better. I'm maybe the most fortunate Afghan in the world, and that fact does not escape me.